Hello students, good afternoon. How are you? You must be good. You must be enjoying your life. Am I right? Yes, you must. Everybody must. So, I am Rajesh Dadich, your mentor in English on behalf of Shiv Jyoti Educational Group, Kota. I am going to teach you something today. Very interesting. So, just get ready. So, what are we going to learn? Of course, your poem. Poem number 5 of your main book in literature and that is woven words. So, we can say this is poem number 5 of your woven word and the poem is the world is too much with us. Don't you think this title is somewhat different? It looks different, right? So, let me explain the title the after the poet then we will study the whole poem line by line okay so the first point to discuss about it the world is too much with us you are too much for me you are too much sometimes we think that the phrase being spoken is negative right so to to a little extent we can say that this title may hold something negative also but here the poet wants to convey a positive message. That's why this title looks a bit different. Point number one. Point number two. What kind of poem is this? Of course, there are eight plus six is equal to 14 lines. You can see four, four, eight, three, eleven and 314. So, 14 lines are there. So, this is not an ordinary poem. This is a sonnet, right? And what kind of sonnet? Very classical sonnet this is. Or we may say, this is a Petrarchan sonnet, right? This is a Petrarchan sonnet. Now, what is Petrarchan sonnet? Generally, Petrarchan sonnets used to have a specific pattern. Yes, poets of that time, Poets of that time used to compose this type of sonnets, means Petrarchan sonnets in a different and specific manner. Means, they used to be two stanzas or we may say the whole poem used to be divided into two parts. Eight, eight lines, a cluster of eight lines and a cluster of six lines, right? With a specific rhyme scheme, they used to follow a specific rhyme scheme also. The sonnet used to be in its own rhyming, right? So, we learn about it also. The first stanza of eight line is called octave, O-C-T-A-V-E, octave. And the second stanza of six lines or the second cluster of six lines is called sestate, S E S. T E T. Now, what is octave and what is sestet? An octave is the cluster of eight lines, a stanza of eight lines that arouses a problem, that occupies a problem. Means the poet is going to discuss a problem on a specific topic in the octave, in eight lines, right? And the following cluster known as sestate of six lines that has got the solution, right? So, problems are always followed by solutions. So, in the next six lines, this these six lines have got solution and these eight lines have got problem. What problem is there? We are going to discuss. But before that, let us have a look at the poet title is clear the world is too much with us yes do not worry this world has got too much for us yes it depends on us what we take this world as here the world means nature our mother nature mother earth this mother nature we are talking so this mother nature is too much with us means it has got too much for us it has got too much lying hidden for us. It is up to us how much we utilize it, how much we enjoy, how much we relish, right? 
So, actually this poem was composed by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth a poet who was fond of nature, nature lover poet he was. Yes, he loved nature too much. So, he was known as a nature poet also right and he was born in the year 1770 and died bred his last in the year 1850. And you know when William Wordsworth was 32 years old, when he was 32 right at that time he composed this poem. It means 1802 he composed this poem, but this poem got published in the year 1808 right. So, in this way we can say that and uh, you can see it has been given also, but we will discuss about the introduction of the poet later right. So, have a look the world is too much with us this whole universe this whole mother earth mother nature is too much with us this is the title this is the speciality of this kind of sonnet that the sonnet itself happens to begin with its title. So, this mother earth this mother nature has got too much for us to use to admire to utilize right. This mother nature is this nature created by God is very beautiful and we all should admire the qualities attributes of this nature and all the natural resources are to use optimistically late or late and soon yes definitely we may come to know of these gifts of nature resources of nature late in our life or soon in our life, but that is for sure that we get them we procure them and we enjoy them late and soon sometimes some people come to know of these sources late in their life period lifetime and sometimes they come to know of these resources soon in the beginning of their life right means as soon as they get senses they come to know the utility the significance of this mother nature right. So, first line is clear the world is too much with us late and soon getting and spanning we lay waste our powers right getting and spanning we all human beings are busy we all human beings are lost somewhere in getting and spanning things. So, do not you think the poet indirectly means to say the poet feels painful yes at the current scenario of mankind what is this world looking like yes the modern world looks quite different from that of olden time. Yes, that is why the poet feels pain at what he sees currently in the so called modern world when industrialization has started. So, we may say this poem was composed on at the onset of industrialization when industrial revolution had just started only machineries came to be used technology everyday new technology was there engines were produced engines were manufactured. So, this whole world became mechanically inhuman. So, the poet is feeling very upset at what has happened to this world where are the emotions man himself has become machine man has no emotions no sentiments. So, the poet is saying getting and spanning everybody is lost somewhere in getting and spanning means everybody is running after this materialistic life yes materialistic pursuits everybody is running after yes everybody is worrying about his income about money and man thinks that money is the basis of all requirements of all our needs. Just think every time we are found 
nowadays we have found using mobile phones using electronic gadgets fans televisions car bikes yes we are using machinery only machines have no emotions they make cluttering sound so we all human beings have also lost our emotions and sentiments and to a little extent i must say we have we also have become machines right we are busy every time we are busy getting money and after if we have earned if you have got something next our step is to utilize or is to use it so getting and spending whatever we have earned we are going to spend that and in this process we lay waste our powers what has I means what are the powers we have been gifted right we have been gifted with we are using those powers means we do not know now how to admire the beautiful nature of ours earlier we used to earlier also we used to live our live our life our forefathers our ancestors they also were happy they were also happy right they also were using all these resources they were happy but now we are not as much happy we think we are happy but every time we are found in tension because we have lost our natural powers and we are wasting our remaining powers in materialistic pursuits so it upsets the poet little we see in nature that is ours this nature is ours god has created this nature for us and you know being the part of this nature we should admire it suppose we are talking about uh, our family we are the part of our family right so we should admire our family or we should criticize or we should forget everything about our family of course we keep our family in our mind exactly this nature is our family and we are the members of this family and we should know how to admire this nature but unfortunately we have little time to look at this beautiful nature of ours we have little time to admire the beauty of this nature created by god we have given our hearts away we should give our hearts to this nature right but instead we have given away our hearts to something else not this nature means we have got diverted from this mother earth from this nature and we have started thinking of some other boons boons of course boons must be positive but they are sordid they are shameless not required means mechanical or materialistic boon we have given our hearts away to materialistic life and this is not good and that's why the poet is feeling painful instead of giving our time our life to this nature means instead of remaining in communion with nature what are we in communion with materialistic life right so this first stanza is complete have you got it students let us switch to next stanza the sea that bears her bosom to the moon her look students her it means the poet is treating the word sea as feminine noun feminine means mother earth mother earth mother nature the poet is talking about the sea as the mother nature the sea that remains facing remains lying facing to the sky with bearing bosom to the moon sky is there and moon is there so moon is in the sky and sea is on the earth so the sea is facing the sky with moon face to face this is beauty right the winds that will be howling at all hours every time wind is blowing man is saying wind is blowing but the fact is cool breeze is blowing not wind cool breeze is blowing but now man has started using the term storms right 
but this is wind and in positive sense it is wind cool breeze is blowing. So, it must be taken for positive sense at all hours every time wind is blowing and the sea gives natural beauty to this mankind and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers and what has happened to us instead of admiring this beauty of sea admiring this cool breeze what have we gathered like we are gathered like sleeping flowers means we are alive but still we have no enthusiasm we have no zeal because we are busy earning money we are busy getting and spanning things in short again materialistic life right life full of luxuries every time we crave for something and suppose one of our wishes is complete we start following next wish of ours so this is materialistic life howling at up at all hours and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers means we are alive but still we behave like sleeping means as if we are not alive right we ourselves are not live with zeal and zest right means we have no zeal we have no enthusiasm for this beautiful nature we have got diverted for this for everything we are out of tune yes for this natural beauty for that natural beauty for this and that to procure to acquire this to procure and to acquire that to get this to get that we are lost yes we have lost somewhere we ourselves do not know so for this and for everything we are out of tune we are we have got disturbed we are not in a particular tune with we are not attuned with nature right so next dear students these eight lines means octave is complete now we are going to switch to the sestate what i told you octave has got problems to discuss and we have discussed the problem and what is the problem that man has got diverted man has got far away from this mother nature right man has got man has kept distance from this mother nature this is the main problem the poet wants to discuss man has got far away from this nature this is the problem and now we are going to study such it means how can we solve this problem how can we sort out this problem so let's see it moves us not oh god oh great god it moves us not all these things have happened but still we are not ready to accept we are not ready to change we need change oh god the poet is saying the whole world is going far away from this nature so oh god oh great god i would rather be a pagan circle in a creed outward the whole world has been divided into different different religions different sects different sections different communities to acquire this and that means while following materialistic life man has forgotten everything and too much difference too much difference is there right so the poet is saying instead of facing these moments i would like to be a pagan who is a pagan a pagan is a person who does not believe in a fixed religion in a specific religion or maybe he doesn't believe in any religion yes William Wordsworth belonged to England, so obviously Christianity is there. So the poet is saying, if not Christianity, I would like to be a pagan. Means I would not be believing in any religion, but instead I would like to be, and any religion which is creed outward means which is passed away. Go now the days when good religion in the name of humanity, mankind was there. Mankind used to be there. but now go on other days no religion is there so we can say no religion is there and we can say the whole world has been divided into different different religions so i would like to be a person pagan who has no religion so might i standing on this pleasant sea so that 
the line is so that I may stand on this pleasant lee. Lee means meadow, grass, grassland, right? This is also one of the sources of natural beauty. So the poet is saying, while standing on this grassland, beautiful grassland, I would like to be a pagan to enjoy this natural beauty. Okay, students. Next, have the same. Look, have glimpses means so that I may have glimpses. Like this you have to read, I may have glimpses that would make me less forlorn. Forlorn means all alone, isolated, right. I will and if I become a pagan, if I am away from this world of religions, I would be able to see, admire this beauty of nature and in this way I would enjoy glimpses, scenes of beautiful scenes of nature. And in this way, I would not be feeling isolated or alone any longer. I would be in the company of nature. So I would not be all alone, right? I, so that I will have, I may have sight of Proteus and while being in the company of nature, I would be enjoying the sight of Proteus. You know, students in the Greek mythology, Proteus is one of the gods. Right, so many Greek gods and goddesses were there. So Proteus is one of the sea gods, right? And who had the ability to make prophecies, right? Foretellings. So I will enjoy this power. I will enjoy the prophecies of Proteus rising from the sea, right? Or here, old Triton blow his wreath wand. Now, who is Triton? Triton the son of Neptune and who is Neptune? Another according to Greek mythology, Neptune is another sea god. So Triton is Neptune's son, right? So he is saying this Triton was blowing his wreath wand, right? This horn is a like conch shell, right? Whenever he was blowing this horn to calm down other seas the clamors in the sea. So I would means a kind of peaceful, sweet music created by sea also. So the poet is saying I would be able to enjoy the glimpses, the sight of Proteus and I would hear Triton blowing his wreath horn. So wreath means circled and circled, right? Corn shell we may call. So dear students, in this way this poem is there. But now we are going to discuss about the poetic terms, literary devices, literary terms, right? So first stanza, and we are going to decide rhyme scheme. We are going to create a rhyme scheme. I told you in octave, this is a being a Petrarchan sonnet. It has got a specific rhyme scheme. Soon, powers, hours, boon. So soon and boon look same so a a powers and hours b b so the rhyme scheme is a b b a got it next moon tune hours flowers so c again the soon boon moon tune they are same so a b b a so we can say the rhyme scheme of the octave is a b b a a B B A. Okay. Next, B and L. C C because they are different from the previous one. So, worn and forlorn. D D. So C D C D. Right. Next is worn. C D C D. Then C D. Horn and D letter we gave to it. So C D C D. Right. So the whole rhyme scheme is A B B A A B B A C D C D C D. In this way the rhyme scheme is there. Next poetic devices metaphor. You can see the C that bears her bosom means the C has been used. The term C has been used as a metaphor. One of the comparing point of poetic device. So metaphor is there like sleeping flowers. It means simile has been used to make a direct comparison. Okay, students. So in this way, we can say this poem is based on 
our feelings of admiration for our nature. I hope you all might have got it. Still, if you come across any kind of doubt, just feel free and share your doubts with us. We are always ready. See you some of the time with different topic. Till then, have a nice time. Thank you.